Technology S-curves, they represent how technology grows and performs over time. So we're going to take a look at what technology S-curves represent and how they relate to innovation. So technology S-curves represent how technology advances and is portrayed over a period of time to reach a given level of performance. And so usually that graphs out just like an S on, the, on a graph. And the lower end of the performance is where the technology is introduced, and the high end of the performance is where it reaches its peak of performance. And so the tail end of the S-curve usually flattens out because where the technology is continued to be used, it will continue to stay at that level of performance. So let's take a look at a typical technology S-curve. This doesn't represent every technology, but it gives you an idea of how to understand a technology S-curve. And here again, uh, the, the horizontal axis is, uh, is a representation of periods of time, and the vertical axis is a representation of how highly the technology is performing. And as you can see, as the technology is first introduced, it's not performing very highly, uh, but then there it goes through a period of growth and improvement, and it reaches a point of what we call its natural limits of performance. And so uh, it, that could take a long period of time, or it could take a short period of time, depending upon how much effort is put into uh, the developing that technology. So we can take a look at an example of uh, technology performance. Here, in this case, it's a propeller aircraft, something that we all kind of can recognize. And you can see down the lower left-hand side, we have uh, the first aircraft uh, was performing very low uh, in, in its performance uh, by comparison to now. Uh, probably comparing to walking, it was pretty fast. But now we look back and say 35 miles an hour by the Wright brothers uh, for their first flight was a fairly low performance for a propeller aircraft. And as we can see, over periods of time, uh, the development of the propeller aircraft increased in its performance, and it reached uh, what we would call a natural limit of performance up at the top, and we're beginning to flatten out at 529 miles an hour, which is as fast as a propeller aircraft can go. We basically can have established that. Uh, so, um, what would the, the limit, the technology limit, the performance limit of a propeller aircraft be? It would be about 529 miles an hour. So, this curve, an S-curve, shows how the technology has improved over time with investment and improvement and innovations to reach a level of uh, performance limit. Now, this uh, curve here, or this diagram here, is a whole range of uh, technology S-curves from um, solar technology firms. And while they don't neat, look like neat um, uh, S-curves, they indeed are representations of how the technology has improved over time for a range of firms. And as you can see, some firms have, uh, have reached a very high level of uh, uh, technology performance uh, and efficiency for their uh, fuel cells, uh, solar fuel cells, and some haven't uh, done very well at all. And uh, even some that have, uh, uh, re you know, entered the, uh, the marketplace uh, as recently as 2000 haven't done very well at all, whereas some that have entered the marketplace back in the 1980s have, uh, have reached some of the highest levels of uh, technology performance with their companies and their technologies. So uh, this curve and this diagram is an example of ways in which different firms may employ technology at different rates. And so I think that's something you just simply need to be aware of, that there are differences in the way in which firms employ, employ these technologies. So here we're coming back to, uh, again, the technology curves and the standard technology curves. And here we have a pair of technology curves. And what happens in technology is new technology replaces old technology. And there is what we call a discontinuity. Something is a, a disruption and a discontinuity when a new technology comes along and displaces that old technology. 
if we can look at that curve on the left and we can visualize how we looked at propeller aircraft and we can say if that is a propeller aircraft technology what is it that's replacing it well what's replacing propeller aircraft technology is jet technology and even jet technology as it's introduced displaces the propeller technology and it too reaches a, a natural limit of its performance uh, we, we could say well jet technology is going to be replaced by rocket technology and you know there's um, Elon Musk is, uh, is uh, developing uh, uh, an approach to do that with space travel. So here again, what you want to look at is new technology replacing old technology. So technology curves often occur in pairs. And in pairs, they occur in multiples. If we look at the idea of lighting technology, over, over the lifetime of lighting technology, we can say, that if we start down with the one of the first forms of lighting technology, a paraffin candle or even a, a little um, oil lamp, uh, a Greek oil lamp, uh, it, it produced a very few lumens. It wasn't very strong. And then the introduction of <clears throat> Thomas Edison's lamp, a light bulb, and then uh, the improvement of that with uh, sodium lamps, and then the improvement of that with mercury lamps, and then the improvement with fluorescent lamps, and then there are subsequent improvements. But you can see there's kind of a ladder and a change of technology S-curves. And so what you have is a replacement and a displacement of old technology by new technology. And we even have that in light bulb technology. As you can see, uh, we've entered an era where uh, on the right-hand side, uh, that's the current technology. On the left-hand side, <clears throat> they're not making uh, standard light bulbs anymore. And because the functionality of uh, light bulbs has improved over a period of time, and so some technologies displace other technologies. And even in the automobile industry, uh, Tesla Motors has, uh, is operating on a series of technology S-curves. It has introduced a, uh, an electric sports car, and it, uh, it is moving toward a more affordable car. It's trying to reach a marketplace where it, it, I think we can all agree that uh, not as many people buy sports cars as they would buy passenger cars or SUVs. And so Tesla is trying to take the technology of the electric car and translate it into a more affordable, more usable, more appealing, uh, more viable automobile uh, somewhere down the line. And so how long it will take for them to introduce those technologies is a matter of question, but that's their strategy right now. So let's take a look at some summary ideas about S-curves. S-curves represent the levels of performance of technology over time, and that's why they're S-curves. They start low and they flatten out uh, over a period of time. And they can be portrayed in pairs where the lagging curve, the one on the left, represents the current technology, and a leading curve, the one on the right, represents an emerging technology. And emerging technologies ultimately will displace those other technologies. And where S-curves can be portrayed in any given industry, they can show significant, uh, and where they do show significant separation, they reveal an opportunity. So where an S-curve of one technology is still very close to the other technology, it might not represent a great innovation opportunity, but where there is a big separation in performance, then uh, that technology represents a, a real innovation opportunity in that industry sector. 